Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to take a look at the types of plant responses and tropisms in plants. So it's important for plants to respond to their environment to avoid abiotic stress. Abiotic factors are things like light, pH or um, nutrients, so anything that's non-living. To avoid herbivory, it's really important you say herbivory here and not to avoid predation because plants aren't predated upon. They also respond to environments to maximise photosynthesis and also to help ensure germination. So anything in a red box here is taken directly from the MART schemes. So a couple of tropisms we need to be aware of. We've got phototropism. So this is the plant's response to light. Positive phototropism can be seen in the stem tips or the, the shoots. And this is helped to maximise the light for photosynthesis. We see negative phototropism in the roots to help prevent them from drying out. Geotropism is the plant's response towards the gravitational field or the gravitational pull. So we see positive geotropism here in the roots because they grow towards the gravitational pull and the stems will grow away. So there we have negative geotropism. Hydrotropism, hydro stands for water here. So this is the plant's response to water. And the plant roots here exhibit positive hydrotropism because they respond by growing towards water. We have thigmotropism and this is a plant's growth towards or in response to touch. So Mimosa pudica, this is a plant that you need to know. It is named in the specification points. You need, do need to know this. So this one here is Mimosa pudica. And as you can see here, when it is touched, the leaves coil up. Now this is a twofold benefit to the plant. So one, it might, that fold in the movement of the leaves might help to scare away any herbivores but also it will help to protect the leaves because as it curls up, it's less likely to be eaten. We also have things like the Venus flytrap that responds to touch. And we also have some uh, plants use others by the use of touch to grow further up by using these kind of appendages to help pull other plants up uh, and grow by cheating almost, if you like. So those are the types of tropisms that we've looked at there in green. We're going to look at now at the chemical defences. So uh, we've got an alkaloid. These are very bitter tasting, such as things like caffeine or nicotine. And, and most of these alkaloids are toxic to other substances, such as the caffeine being toxic to fungi and insects and nicotine being um, toxic or poisonous to many insects. Another one is tannins. Uh, we've got quite a variety here. So tannins, again, have a very bitter taste to put animals off eating the leaves. They're also toxic to insects as well. Another one here, we've got terpenoids. Um, these ones are produced by plants, um, which often form essential oils. And these, again, act as toxins towards insects or fungi to stop them from eating these particular plants. So lemongrass is an example of this one. Um, pheromones, this is a very um, clever way for a plant to uh, defend itself against herbivory. Uh, so these are chemical signals that are released by the plants which affect the behaviour of other species. So for example, when corn plants are being eaten by caterpillars, they produce a chemical which attracts parasitic wasps of the caterpillar. So when those wasps are, arrive, they lay their eggs inside the caterpillars which will eventually cause the caterpillars to die off. And this is seen in various different species of plant. So there we have the different types of plant responses, the response to abiotic stress, and also chemical defences and tropisms. The practical investigations we'll look at in a little bit more detail later on. Guys, if you like the videos, please subscribe so you get alerted when we get more videos. Good luck with your exams, and please remember to include as much scientific terminology as possible in your answers. Avoid using the words it, they, amount and size. Good luck with your exams.